he, she doesn't want you. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Self Love Monday. Now, this one came into being because I was listening to a young man. Um, he did a podcast on the fact that he was really talking to men about the fact that men need to get out of the begging game. Either she wants you or she doesn't and move on. And I get it. And that and that's true. But what you could tell is that he's a gentleman that's been hurt. And he, and he basically said that. He said there was two women he went after over a six-year period and neither one of them wanted him. And he's not with either one of them. They're not in his life and they don't care nothing else about him. And so basically what he's teaching is so as a guy, if she's not instantly re kind of receptive towards you, then move on. But that's a conversation from a gentleman that's hurt. And I get what he's saying. And it's true in terms of everything we talk, talk about here on Self Love Monday is learning to value you. That's where it starts. And when you get to that point, then you can go out and you're ready and prepared for relationships. Because what happens in a lot of cases is the reason he or she is not attracted to you, like in his particular case, is obviously there's something in you that is lacking. Because a lot of times what people want to keep pushing is this external conversation. Um, I, I, was, I heard a gentleman uh, was it yesterday or day before, but he had did a podcast and he was basically, you guys can listen to podcasts because I'm always looking for information, other people's views, because we all have different perspectives. We can always learn from others. No one has all the answers. You guys have heard me say that many times before and I know it's true. So I'm always listening, but this particular gentleman, and he's very, very popular out here in the um, relationships uh, airwaves. And one of the things that he talked about was how do you know if she's the one? And the first thing he talked about is the external beauty that you have to be attracted to her because he says you never want to be with someone that eventually, folks, you guys know, I totally disagree with it. And this guy, like I said, is, is at the top of the, the speaking realm and I'm just shaking my head and I'm like, that to me is just bad information. I get it, the physical attraction it's very significant in the beginning because, in all honesty, that's what attracts you to someone is because you don't know them. So the physical attraction is what's going to bring you in. You guys have heard me have that conversation before. It's real. If I don't know you, you know, some people think looking at external is shallow. And I get that's kind of what he's saying, which is shallow. Is uh, But the external is going to be the initial attraction because you don't know them. Once you get to know the person, you have to get past looking at physical attraction. Here's why I say that. Because someone that you may not be physically attracted to, as you get to know them as an individual, you become attracted to them. As you walk through life, you start to see the world from a different perspective and you may become attracted to them. That's why I said what the guy was talking about, the, the other gentleman, when he was saying if she's not into you, then move on. Um... That's a hurt. That's why I said that's a hurt gentleman because life changes and the way people see things change. Just because they're not attracted to you today doesn't mean they're going to be. They won't be attracted to you tomorrow. Doesn't mean they're not the right match for you. Just because they're not interested in you today. Um, what you have to realize is people have to go through growing. Now I agree with him in the sense that you can't sit still. Spending your time and energy trying to make someone be attracted to you. That part he mentioned and that part I totally agree with. That's not your job to get them to like you by changing who you are to adjust to them. Remember, again, that's what Self Love Monday is about. It's, it's about learning to love you and then attracting the person who fits the direction in which you're going. So as you work on you, the person may, that wasn't attracted to you today all of a sudden sees the changes in you and they're attracted to you. But what he's talking about, if you change who you are, which is what he was doing, you change who you are, then they see that and they see the fact that you've lost your own identity because now you're looking at them 
to make you feel significant. And now you become a person, you guys have heard me say before about there's a difference in being nice and a person who's looking to be a pleaser. And you become that pleaser. And when I say that, for those of you who haven't heard me talk about that, the pleaser is someone who has a very low self-esteem. See, that's why the lady will start to pull away from you even though you're chasing. It's because a pleaser is someone who has a low self-esteem. And therefore, they're trying to get their significance and feel better about themselves through someone else. And that's where she may lose that attraction to you and move away. And that's why he's having those issues because as you say, the more you change and you're changing in a sense that you've getting away from who you really are, that's not a good change. And I shouldn't say who you really are because none of us know we're always changing daily. But I'm just saying in the direction that you say you want for your life. And that's, again, why we talk about self-development and um, learning to love the person in the mirror to figure out the direction in which you're headed and then attract the person. A perfect example I would use is I had a friend who she had told us, and you guys have heard this story before, but it goes perfect in here. Um, her dream was she was like 5'10", and she said her husband was going to be like 6'4", 6'5", nice looking, kind of, you know, tall guy, nice build, basically kind of like a basketball player. That was kind of her, her, uh, illustration. And she said, and he was going to fear God. Well, there's a gentleman that came along five, two, pretty heavy guy, everything opposite of what she said. He did feel fear God though, actually ended up becoming a pastor. But they got to know each other as friends. And she wasn't attracted to him. It's kind of what the guy was saying. If she's not into you, whatever. <laughs> okay, this is a perfect example. That was not the guy she was looking for. But she got past the external, which is the problem that the world keeps trying to teach people about looking at external, which is what I told you that second guy said, as far as that being a crucial point in a relate. That's bad teaching. Because things happen. You're not as young as you used to be. You could get in an accident and something happened. What if you, the person gets in a fire and, and, and part of their face gets burned or their whole body gets burned? Um, what if they lose their hair? What if they get an illness? There's so many things that can happen that their physical appearance can change. So if the, that is what you're attracted to, and that becomes what's important to figure out if she's the one, that relationship is doomed because the thing that you're making major is something that's guaranteed to change. Not might, guaranteed to change because as we get older, we change. Now we do know there's people that use plastic surgery and they do all the other stuff to try to stay that way. But again, I feel for people that do that because again, you don't like the person in the mirror. That's why you keep making the adjustments and you're no longer you. You're someone you just created and made yourself into that person. Folks, that's not good. I've had people, even when we talk about my little gray hairs and stuff all in my head, you know, people have joked and said, would you use that man's thing to dye your hair? No, I'm natural. This is me. This is my hair. If a woman is turned off by that because it's like, ooh, you got gray hair, she ain't the one. I'm not going to go gray, dye my hair so it'll be black so I can look like someone that you want me to be. That's the, what you're looking for. Strive to be the best you possible. And then find someone who wants you. So I agree with the gentleman in terms of if she doesn't want you, Moving on, but not in the sense that we can't be friends or we can't whatever, because we never know. Um, I remember e even in my particular example, um, I was originally told, my wife told me I was arrogant. She would never date me. I would never get her phone numbers. All these never, never, nevers. And I went after her, kind of against what he's talking about. She didn't want me. She was like, never. I will never date you. Folks. I ended up with her 32 years uninterrupted. We never broke up. We were never that couple that was married, 
I mean, that dated, broke up, got back together, or was married, and we had problems. None of that. 32 years consistent, consistently with someone who told me she wasn't into me. Totally against what he said. I did go after her. And she got to know me as an individual and realized a lot of the stuff that I was putting out there, because I can look back now, folks, I had some serious issues. She, the more I look back now, I was like, ooh, you were pretty arrogant. And man, she was right. I don't know how she put up with you. And But she got to know me as an individual and could see the facade of what I was putting out there, that what I was putting out in the public wasn't really who I was. And that's the person that she got in a relationship with is who I actually was. And then because of who she was, we started adding to each other's life. And 32 years later, and those that don't know my story, I lost her six years ago to cancer. So what the reason I'm sharing my story and the one I'm talking about my friend is don't get caught in anyone telling you what, what does and does not work. That gentleman that was hollering about the fact that going to someone that doesn't want you is an example of a gentleman. He's telling you his pain that he hasn't gotten over which is not good for him. And he's out speaking on relationships. He's hurt still. And he hasn't gotten through that. And now he's teaching you how to run so you don't experience. And that's even what he said. He said, I don't want you to go through what I went through. Folks, just because he went through it and it didn't work for him doesn't mean it won't work for you. But I am in agreement that you have to decide what you want. Strive on being the better you. Don't sit back waiting on that person. Because even you guys know, again, my story, when I was when I was dating her, and that was kind of some of the reasons I was still going after her too, is because I have to admit, I was a little out of control then. I, and that's part of that arrogance. I was dating a bunch of women. I was out of control. And the fact that she said no didn't matter to me. Again, that's why I say how you feel about yourself. I was like, she don't know who she's saying no to. I'm like, <laughs> That's part of that arrogance, but that was kind of where I was. I'm like, hmm, watch. But I was dating other people. I didn't sit back and put all of it into one person and go, whatever it takes, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get her and, 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 and my world stops. And that's kind of what he was saying. And I agree with him in that term. Do not shut off your life. Isolate everyone else because your whole focus becomes chasing after someone who doesn't want you. The key is always become the best you. Always strive to become a better you. And that person sees that change and might be interested. But at the same time, as you work on you, you might not be attracted to them when they do recognize and they come forward and you'd be like, you know, hey, we could be friends, still be friends. Not that you're trying to give, and, and folks, please don't do this kind of like a revenge thing. That's not what I'm saying. It's because of what you're looking for. They no longer qualify because you started to grow in the area in which you wanted to go. And they stayed the same. And now the things that attracted you to them no longer does. How many times have you, have you done that where you could go see people that you used to date or you were in a relationship with? And you go, what was I thinking? How, to, especially after you get you hold a conversation with them, you go, was I really messed up that bad that I dated someone with that kind of mindset? And again, it's not a good, bad, right or wrong, but I'm just saying because you guys don't see the world the same anymore. And that happens. So that's the real world. So my point in this whole conversation, male or female, because you guys know, I believe Everything works the same. We're talking about human beings. That's why I said he and she doesn't want you. You have to be, have to love that person in the mirror. Work on being the best you possible. And then you will attract the right person. But more than that, you won't become that person that chases after anyone to begin with. Why? Because you're so strong in who you are, because you know the direction in which you are, you're going to look for someone who's headed in that same direction and you're not going to have this battle. So everything I talk about always comes back to the same thing. Get rid of your problems first. Get you together 
and the dating part will take care of itself. It's not about going and just looking for someone who wants to be with you. Because the fact they want to be with you and you may be attracted to them, they still may not be the right person for you if you don't have your stuff together. Because now we do have that external physical attraction going on and eventually that stuff dies. That's why you guys hear me all the time. If anybody teaches you or shares with you that the top things to be looking for in a relationship has anything to do with external, whether it's cars, FICO scores, money, any other, anybody that's teaching you as far as relationships and they put that at the top of the conversation, they're talking about, well, you got to be in the best, your body's got to be in the best shape possible and your wardrobe and anything external, anyone that, that you're going to as a coach, in my view, if any of that external is at the top of what they're telling you is important, do not allow them to be your coach because it's bad teaching. Why? External things disappear. External things break. We lose external things. We can lose our money. We can lose our health. We can lose, you know, I, you know, had a six pack, got ill. Now, I get, now I got a gut, got whatever. Life happens. External changes all the time. Don't let people tell you that that's what's important in your relationship. Please don't buy into that. You're doomed. My friend that I was talking about, the guy, again, was 5'2", pretty big guy, feared guy, that became her husband. She loved everything about that man. And, and it, was, it was amazing to see because, like I said, he was like maybe like 5'2 or something. She's like 5'10". So you know that in itself, people look at like, they ain't married, are they? You know, it's like that must just be a friend. No, that's her husband. She worshipped that man. And the reason I said did is because he passed away. But my point in this conversation is she didn't listen to that because I used to tease her when she'd tell me, I'd be like, how your husband doing? You know, this is when they were just talking on the phone and stuff. And she'd be like, hey, my husband, you know how my husband looked. Because she went back to the external illustration to tell me what her husband looked like. But I knew the conversation, the internal stuff that they were connecting on, which is what I told you would happen with me and my wife. It was the internal. She got to know me. Not the facade, the external stuff I was throwing out there. She got to know me. And that's the same thing with him. She got to know him. And once she could stop listening to the world, and that's why I used to tease her and say, how you husband? Hey, my husband, you know how my husband looked? Because see, she was still in the mindset of what's the world going to think when they see her with a guy that's 5'2 and totally opposite and all that. But once she got past that and she got confident in who she was and what she's looking for and none of that mattered, she looked for the man that was right for her. <laughs> Boy. She made that move and they got married. Same thing with, 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 my, with in our situation. When she got to know me, she was able to ignore all that external stuff that the world keeps telling you is important. Folks, don't get caught in that. I've talked about that many times before. But anyway, because she doesn't want you right now doesn't mean that she won't. Just because he doesn't want you right now doesn't mean that he won't. My point to go along with what the gentleman said is, don't sit back spending your time and energy chasing them. You spend your time becoming the best you possible. And if that relationship is meant to occur, it'll happen. I'm a firm believer in things happen the way they're supposed to be. If they're supposed to be the same thing I tell people with your ex. If they're your ex, they're your ex for a, for a reason. And a lot of people say, why do people spend their time chasing after their ex? I agree. Why are you spending your time chasing after them? But at the same time, I will not say that your ex is not the right person for you. You guys get me? Because maybe there's some growth or a different way of seeing the world that you need to do and he needs to do or vice versa. And after you guys make those adjustments, now you click and become the right mix for each other. Um, how many times have you seen that where people got married and got divorced? And then they stayed friends and later down, down the line, they remarried because they both matured and they both start to see the world differently and what's important and that kind of stuff. And it works. 
So again, get clear what you're looking for. Don't let the world make your decisions for you. Folks, they don't know. They don't know. They're not supposed to know. This is your journey. You got to know what's important with you. Now, if you're a person that wants to use the external, good luck. I wish you the best. Odds are against you, though. I'm going to be honest with you. Odds are against you. Find the person who matches you internally. Together, we can go accomplish the external stuff. So, as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you that uh, we talk on uh, Self Love Monday, I look forward to talking to you again next Monday. For the, those of you on Relationship Thursday, I look forward to talking to you next Thursday. Uh, run over to my site, ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online. That'll keep you up to date on everything that I got going on. And folks, just remember, um, whatever you're doing, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Go out and enjoy this journey. Understand that Ron loves you, Ron believes in you, and most importantly, you're totally equipped to accomplish anything you want. And that includes attracting the right person if you go about this in the right way. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care and enjoy the journey. Bye-bye.